Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Daily Crypto Bite. Today is Monday, September 13th, and we're getting some real interesting price action and news to start the week today. Lots to talk about, but before we dive into that, Doc, CJ, anything interesting happened this weekend? <laughs> Lots. Lots. Um, I was out in uh, Vegas, guys, mm. and uh, uh, it was uh, rocking. But the same thing that you and I have talked about, the two of you and I, and I bet all of your friends too, is that uh, there are not enough workers, simply not enough. Um, so there were so many, I was uh, giving a lecture at Bally's and I was staying at the Paris next door. I'll bet half the restaurants and uh, convenience sort of things like coffee shops and things like that are closed, closed. The place is jammed. There are, you know, a gazillion people up and down the strip uh, and in the casinos, but they can't. And here's an even more telling thing. Uh, you know, we always love these anecdotal things like, oh, I saw this or I saw that. But this one's pretty telling. You guys know what Vegas is like on a Sunday morning. They call it rehab, at least at the Hard Rock and elsewhere, you know, because all these people that came for the weekend or they were up all night. Right. And then they're going to go to a pool all day and try to, you know, keep the party going uh, because, you know, hair of the dog and all that sort of thing. Well, uh, would you believe that the pool at Paris, they had last call for liquor at 430 in the afternoon yesterday? 4 30 in the afternoon why because they have to close the pool by five again why can't get enough workers cannot get enough workers now i think that and i've said this publicly i think that will change now that the enhanced employment benefits are rolling off maybe it takes a month so maybe we don't see it till november in the jobs numbers but man we have uh some serious damage to overcome in the labor market. Um, I know that's not a crypto specific thing, but there were so many people out there for crypto conferences that were going on all over Vegas um, and crypto meetups that I just figured I'd offer it up that, man, there's not enough workers. Yeah, that's something that's been all over Twitter for the last few months here. And, you know, some people have speculated that that could be in part due to the fact that people have been making so much money trading equities in crypto that, you know, there's no point in going back to your job as a waitress or a waiter if you're trading on Robinhood and making more money than you did, you know, working 50 hours a week. So interesting stuff there for sure. And John, also, you are going to be attending the SALT conference. Uh, very excited to hear you reporting back with some of the interesting things going on there. The president of FTX is going to be there talking tomorrow. Lots of interesting speakers as well. So excited to hear you reporting back with some crypto related news from Salt. Yeah, hopefully we'll have some good interviews even today. Um, I've got some new equipment. Andrew's there. Uh, Glenn is going to be there. Uh, so uh, we'll have a lot of folks there to cover things. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's always a great show. But uh, Monty, shall we jump into the big boards? Yeah, before we jump into the big boards, though, CJ, let's hit these couple pieces of news because I think they could have a somewhat contributing factor in some of the price action we're seeing this morning so far. Let's start with this one right here. This is a headline that we have seen several times over the last year and a half. MicroStrategy buys more Bitcoin while it sells more stock. Um, so their total is now up to 110,000 BTC in total. Um, so big news here from MicroStrategy, the perma permable Michael Saylor has added more to the balance sheet. But this, I think, is the more interesting headline, uh, definitely more unique, and that is Walmart announces a major partnership with Litecoin. Uh, this is out of left field, in my opinion. Walmart, obviously a major retailer, and Litecoin, uh, which has been around for a very long time. CJ and I were joking. This sounds like a 2017 uh, headline here. Uh, Litecoin has slipped out of the top 10 in terms of market cap, but this right here is actually very big news for the asset. Um, you're going to be able to make purchases at Walmart using your Litecoin. And a lot of people have speculated why they chose Litecoin. Um, I think Charlie Lee did a good job of making a case with Walmart here 
talking about Litecoin's low fees and fast transaction times are perfect for leading e-commerce stores like Walmart. Um, and that is valid. Um, you know, Litecoin's transaction times are fast, their fees are low, but some of that has to do with a lack of network congestion that is uh, seen on, you know, the Bitcoin blockchain or even Ethereum. So this could bring some major, not only speculation, but utility to the Litecoin blockchain as well. And uh, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on these two pieces of news before we dive into the charts. Yeah, this is this seems like 2017 news because it doesn't seem as if there have been any real developments or or major prominent catalysts on Litecoin within the last year or so. Um, always famous for Charlie Lee selling the top and dumping all of his Litecoin in 2017. Nonetheless, if we're truly talking about payments in the crypto space, uh, for me, I think the the true or the, the most volume payments is going to come from USDC now that it's natively on Solana. And it's going to be a much faster technological uh, blockchain, even when compared to Litecoin. So I think there are still a lot better alternatives in terms of technology for these payment uh, infrastructures. But nonetheless, it just uh, it's good for the Litecoin holders. But I think there are definitely more suitable al alternatives at this point. Agreed. Agreed. And as for that micro strategy news, CJ, that seems to be having a pretty big effect on Bitcoin's price action. Things were looking a bit bleak this morning, uh, low volume over the weekend. We had sort of a bearish pennant forming. Shout out to Bob Dittrich in the chat for pointing that out. Um, but today we got a nice little spark to start the morning. You want to dive into the charts and tell the people what you're seeing here? Well, unfortunately, that nice spike has been erased in like the last oh. five minutes before we started this show. Nonetheless, I think uh, a lot of what's going to take up today's show is going to be a discussion around Bitcoin dominance as well. So I will jump in and share screens here. You know, one thing that we were talking about before... Uh, we started streaming was that 93% of all of Bitcoin supply has not moved in the last month. Uh, longer term holders continue to accumulate. And I think that we are seeing some good supply absorption during this particular uh, period of time. Um, the fundamentals have really not changed in terms of BTC, but uh, this sell pressure, I think we're still getting just due to some profit taking and you know, that really crazy run up in terms of the altcoins in the last month. However, I think it is notable that now we have the CCI turning up. Um, we're starting to see the trend actually have a little bit of weakness um, in terms of downside sell pressure. Another thing I want to cover today is Bitcoin dominance. And when we look at the trend from a structural perspective, uh, it does kind of look like your traditional H of death, you know, something like this, where you get that bearish pennant and then further continuation. However, I don't think that the true breakdown of this H uh, is going to occur yet. I do believe it will occur when we hit a potential second altcoin season and we see things like ADA, Solana, Luna continue to make those parabolic highs. Being said, in the short term, I think we still are likely for a regression to this moving average and an increase in Bitcoin dominance. Also, one thing from a technical perspective that I think is pretty powerful and ultimately helped us call uh, or, or at least start to scale in, you know, in the 30K region. And that was due to a massive divergence on the MACD. And we're seeing something very similar now when we talk about Bitcoin dominance. If we go here and really highlight this divergence, look at our previous low in Bitcoin dominance and compare that to where we are now in terms of the overall MACD. And we have a massive uh, divergence in terms of bearish momentum. So I think that do does bode well for a continuation and uh, a regression back to that moving average in the short term. But overall, um, I think we're still seeing supply absorption in Bitcoin. Um, and I think Bitcoin dominance is looking very primed. Uh, we talk about this flow of capital model where typically a lot of institutional investors will start in Bitcoin, retail investors will start in Bitcoin. I uh, will see a nice run up 
then those profits will get allocated into more risk on assets in the altcoin market. We see Bitcoin dominance dropping off rapidly. And then eventually those altcoin profits get taken, whether they be into USD and then flow back into the Bitcoin and the cycle kind of starts over again. So I think we are nearing the that aspect in the cycle, that time in the cycle where capital is rotated back into Bitcoin. Great point, CJ. The Bitcoin dominance chart is really interesting there with that divergence in the MACD. Um, one other thing, this weekend, uh, one of our members in chat shared an article from a JP Morgan analyst stating that, you know, right now feels similar to May in a lot of ways and that alts are overextended. I would disagree with that because of one thing that you touched on there, CJ, and that is the role that long-term holders are currently playing in this market. They have been, you know, relentlessly accumulating. And one thing that's different now than what we saw in May is there is no distribution happening amongst those long-term holders and whales at this current point in time. When we were running up in May, whales were distributing into that strength, but we haven't seen that yet. All-term, um, the amount of capital locked away by long-term holders is still at an all-time high. Um, and that was just exasperated after last week when we had that massive leverage liquidation event. So I completely agree with you, CJ. I think we're gonna see over the next week or so, Perhaps some profit taking in some of the assets that have gone parabolic. Uh, we got we got Solana, Cardano. Now we even have some more assets like Algo, uh, Atom. All of these assets have performed tremendously well, even into market kind of neutrality here. And I think that is a symbol that perhaps those can come back to earth. That capital will flow back into Bitcoin, and Bitcoin will lead the charge for that next leg up. It's all supported by Bitcoin dominance, long term holders. Lots of metrics are pointing us in that direction. So. Thank you for sharing that with us, CJ. But yeah, and yeah Doc, quick, go ahead. Guys, the uh, the uh, crypto greed and fear index, uh, or fear and greed, whichever way you prefer to view it, um, is right now at a forty four. Yesterday it was a thirty two. Um, that's getting towards extreme uh, fear. Um, and last week we were at a seventy nine, which is extreme greed. And so literally, uh, as the three of us were on the show Tuesday last week, you know, that's when that bang, all of a sudden we saw that massive drop in about 300 seconds. Uh, and that was when we were at that 79 reading of uh, greed. Uh, and everybody was bulled up because of El Salvador, because Panama and Cuba and so forth had all said, hey, we're making moves into this uh, adoption of Bitcoin as a currency as well. People got bulled up, a little too bulled up. We've already talked about how those lead to liquidations. And now we're getting, you know, 44 is certainly not extreme. If they list it as extreme fear on the crypto fear and greed index, I'd say that's modest fear because it's a 50-50, right? We're only six points below 50. That's not extreme fear. That's just fear. Uh, extreme fear is in the 20s to me. So to CJ's point, Matt, I think we could see, you know, a little more pressure before the pressure lifts uh, just because people are getting a little scared here. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up fear and greed, John, because I was looking at this chart here from lookintobitcoin.com, they have some really great metrics. And this relative unrealized profit and loss chart is kind of a good indication of where we're at in that uh, kind of fear and greed cycle. And as you can see here, you know, we only made it up to about the top of the greed um, here back in May. But here, you know, during this most recent rally, which the JP Morgan analyst compared to May, we only very briefly moved into this period of greed before moving back into the optimism denial area. And this is just calculated by, um, you know, using the mark cap minus realized cap divided by the mark cap. So interesting to note that we are back in this optimism denial fear range. And just looking at this, I think it looks very different from what we were seeing in May and implies that we still have a significant amount of room to move to the upside before we are truly overextended uh, like we've seen in previous market cycles. Yep. Well, you already uh, led in with my uh, um, uh, doge of the day, um, and you probably didn't even know it, 
Monty. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. But um, my my doge of the day is Algorand. Um, and why? Oh, a little thing like a 92% jump in volume. I mean, uh, you know, that's pretty extreme. All the time we talk about three things, volume, volatility, velocity. And you're getting, uh, you know, a real pop in volume significantly in the last 24 hours. Now, does it trade back above $2.50? Because that's where Algorand was. Um, does it go back there? I think it could. It's right now, it's down 12% at $1.98. Um, and I'm thinking that we might get a shot at a pop uh, that takes us back towards, let's see, on the 12th, you know, just one day ago, we peaked at 252. So, you know, I'll take a slice like that. I'll take a slice below $2 to play for a pop towards 250. Uh, but it's trade for me. How about you? Thank you for that, Doc. You know, I have to apologize to the audience. I think that Walmart news is actually fake in terms of Litecoin accepting it. It's kind of funny. We were a little skeptical to begin with. It didn't really make sense. But, uh, you know, let's just uh, hold on for further guidance here. But now the tweet has actually been removed from the Litecoin Foundation's Twitter handle. So I don't think this is actually real. And as a result, I mean, it looks like somebody really sold in to that 20% jump in Litecoin earlier. So, yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, but nonetheless, I'll pass it back to you, Monty. Wow, that is, uh, that is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's been legitimate sources reporting on that. CNBC reported on that, uh, you know, lots of legitimate sources. I'm gonna wait and see if that news is confirmed or not. Um, that's very interesting stuff. One last thing I want to mention, I don't really have a doge of the day today, but I just want to take a look at Bitcoin here from a quick technical perspective. Um, so last night in the room, chatting with some members, Bob Dittrich in particular, and he pointed out this um, pennant formation we have forming here in Bitcoin and in ETH as well. And as you can see here, although we are getting some nice price action this morning, we are now breaking down below this pennant formation. And I think the biggest test for Bitcoin and I know a lot of people um, on Twitter and even in our room would agree with this is going to be this level here at 42.3K. For me, this is the most critical support level for Bitcoin. As you can see, it was strong resistance back here in July. And I would very much like to see that level hold up um, in the interim. If it doesn't, I'm looking to this next level of about 40K here as a possible level of accumulation. But I do expect uh, some whales and long term holders to come in at around this 42K level and start buying Bitcoin kind of relentlessly. So interesting to note, we got this bearish pennant formation here. And for that reason, I'm going to be a bit hesitant in uh, picking a doge of the day today. So I'm just going to kind of sit on my hands, be a little bit patient, wait for some of this fake news to get shaken out on Twitter and see what the market gives us for the rest of the week. So just wanted to point this out real quick. Cool. Well, remember, folks, um, as I told a room filled with a thousand people out in uh, the convention this weekend at uh, Bally's, uh, you can get 25 bucks in crypto, in particular in Bitcoin, by typing rebel25 in the uh, promo code box on Voyager. We are brought to you by Voyager five days a week. Uh, they're a fabulous broker that has 60 plus digital assets pays up to double digits for your deposited crypto, zero commissions, lightning fast, easy to use. Um, all you got to do is type rebel 25 in the promo box to get uh, a little reward for listening to the show and signing up. And don't forget those two guys, um, CJ and Monty are in the crypto trading room at market rebellion all day. So you can try it out for $1 for your first month. Um, after that, it's $39. So $1 for the first month, that's a pretty good deal, right? <laughs> Just to try it out. And uh, they're in there 24 hours a day, folks. We have people supporting it 24 hours a day, along with a lot of great crypto traders. So check it out. Go to marketrebellion.com forward slash try crypto, just like it says uh, below us on the... Uh, uh, broadcast. 
Yep, that's right. And we've got some big improvements coming soon to our room. Uh, we got a new charting platform completely redone, um, some new tools as well. We think you guys are going to really like it. So we've taken all your feedback into consideration. We just want to make the best room possible for you guys. So if you want to try it now, you can try it for just a dollar, like Doc said, at the link below. But thank you guys so much for watching. CJ and I will be in the room. So any questions you guys have, feel free to drop by and ask them. But we will see you guys again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day and take care. Thank you, guys.